all fluff, no substance. The core gameplay is horrible and a lot of money has been spent on their voice actors in dating simulator and very literal making combat even slightly interesting. Perhaps if it weren't turn based, it could have been a masterpiece. Battle takes way too long and the most boring turn based game I ever played. Oldest Gate 3's first 4 hours is the most disappointing game experience I ever had. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Why I'm buying Baldur's Gate 3? What an amazing time to be a gamer. Larian Studios has really defined the industry and set the golden standard for modern gaming. From its humble beginning as a small team working on their first project, The Lady, The Mage, and The Knight, which is a gameplay focused narrative that highlights individual talents of three protagonists. There are puzzles, challenges, and pitfalls, all sorts of trickery scenarios that incentivizes players to solve them by utilizing the three's unique abilities. This is obviously a setup for multiplayer and it is a feature in the original content. Concept. But unfortunate circumstances, despite the time and effort, it never reached its final stages of development due to not having enough funds from publishers to invest in the project. That didn't stop that small team though, because soon after, they worked on their first official game that was published in 1997 which is LED Wars, which stands for Life Evolution Drug, shortly called LED Wars. This is a futuristic real-time strategy game which has a top-down perspective reminiscing of the old Command & Conquer games. The main selling point of the game is its AI, which was really advanced for its time and was known to be one of the hardest to be beat till this day. What's really impressive is that the team only had 6 months of development cycle to basically work on the game. Despite all of those, it only had relative commercial success. Over the coming years, Larian Studios had to find a way to keep the company afloat and prevent it from going bankrupt for several times. Each passing day, the founder of Larian did his best to work with some small projects like the making of casino games just to get by. In 2002, they released their first major project, Divine Divinity. Despite the rough start, it sold relatively well with some commercial success and made some waves in the RTS community. Having signed a real publisher this time, it had its problems. The contract that they agreed on stated that if Florian couldn't sell millions of copies under the royalties model, it made very hard for them to earn any money out of it, which led Divine Divinity earning almost nothing to the studio. Years went by, they keep working on Divinity 2. With next to no money to the company struggling to make ends meet, they work on some minor projects to pay the bills and to keep the lights on. Then they finally rolled out Divinity 2 in 2009, but it lacked quality and polish the studio desperately needs. Due to pressures from the publisher and the company's financial status, which showed in the final product that feels rushed and the founder particularly said that it was riddled with bugs. Despite all of that, it performs somehow alright, alright enough to keep the studio from getting shut down that is. Then in 2014, after difficult years of staying afloat and somehow keep going, Larian took a chance, a gamble, to risk all or nothing and stake everything. All the budget, resources, and manpower was pumped into a certain project. For Larian, this was vindication or the death of an already dying studio. Do not film the bloody password, will you? <laughs> Four. Four. Three. Three. Two. <laughs> Shall we change the number? <laughs> Quickly, change it to seven million gazillion. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Obviously. No. We have to pay fees. I, of course, you have to pay fees. Both <gasps> funding your responsibility. responsibility. Yeah, 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 yeah. Da, no, da, da. I read you actually it. have to make a game with it. Launch project now. Launch, voila. There you go. Oi, oi. Your project has launched. It is now live on Kickstarter. And so. Divinity Original Sin was in the works. The company started to fundraise the project. I remember way back 
they started looking for backers in Kickstarter, promising a real old school CRPG experience with modern concept and ideas. To its great success, it garnered around upwards of 19k backers, shattering its original goal of $400,000. With all that hard work and determination, it all paid off. For my 800, I think we're going to make 800 on this. Uh, so enjoy because this is obviously also the result of your work. If the game wouldn't look as good as it does and it would have all the features that it does or how all the, the, the design implemented, then obviously this would not be possible. Uh, that's it uh, for the update. I hope I'll start here again when you reach our stretch goal like in a couple of days and then the next stretch. We're already well on our way and we're already 2% of our stretch goal, so in less than an hour, hopefully, it keeps on going up. Divinity Original Sin is one of the most rewarding RPGs to come along in years. Its quests and combat compelled me to think hard about my actions and choices, which is more than I usually get to say about contemporary RPGs. Its depth, personality, and combat challenges easily allow it to hold its own against the likes of heavyweights like Dragon Age Origins. These systems invite constant experimentation throughout dozens of memorable hours of combat and cheeky storytelling, and its rich modding toolkit provides a framework for enjoyable player-made adventure for years to come. The game in its first month after release in 2014 sold around 500,000 copies. Having great success commercially finally provided a breath of fresh air financially for the team and was able to expand globally to provide for more ambitious projects in the future. In a few years time, works on Divinity Original Sin 2 started to take off. Hi everybody and welcome to the headquarters of our Kickstarter campaign here in Seattle where we've been preparing for PAX Prime and where indeed we started the Kickstarter for Divinity Original Sin 2 this morning at 6 o'clock, a time at which nobody expected that less than 12 hours later we would already have reached our goal. It went so fast that we've been caught off guard and so we haven't uh, been able to finish up on all the preparations for the stretch goals but rest assured they're coming to you very soon most likely tomorrow uh, and uh, we are incredibly grateful of course it is a fantastic result I mean uh, Divinity Originals in one was funded in 12 days which was already pretty good but this one was done in 12 hours and it's a testimony of your love for RPGs because we came to you with a pitch which was actually quite complex because we were talking about adding more dialogue options and adding more origin stories but clearly you uh, really care about your RPGs and uh, so do we so we're a good match uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow take care everybody and uh, have a good day the divine is dead have you forgotten we are on our own there is only us and what we can do to protect each other. What can yet be blessed can yet be restored. One way or another, divinity will survive. Having released in 2017, it easily surpassed the great success its predecessor had in terms of sales value. Having perfected the formula of old school CRPG with modern execution, they now set their eyes on something big. It's not only just big, it's one of the biggest. Larian Studios wanted to develop a juggernaut of a game. They saw the potential of the IP. With their industry, knowledge, and experience in making amazing CRPGs, this would be their next big gamble. Wizards of the Coast is the holder and proprietary owner of Baldur's Gate license. Not only that, they are also the gaming industry's juggernaut who owns D&D and Magic the Gathering. Together with some other beloved IPs which garnered millions in revenue per year, this will never be easy especially if you're planning to make the third game of its beloved Baldur's Gate franchise. What's your business today? Oh, we're here to license Baldur's Gate 3. Good luck with that. People have been trying for many years. Oh, really? Yeah, hope you came prepared. Um, I came prepared. Hi, guys. It's Fan. How's it going? Good. No one told me it was going to be this kind of meeting. Well, I got a special request. Okay. Let me get uh, out my, uh, my deal maker. Well, uh, yeah. Well, you, you don't need that. You uh, don't need the armor. Uh, well, I'd like to license Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> Why? You need the armor. <laughs> yeah, I 
like you really need the armor. Really? What, okay. what, what, what is it going to take? This has got to be big. I mean, this has got to be a grand invention. This okay. Is, it's got to be true to D&D lore. can't have you just reinventing things while we're not looking. Okay. And players have to feel that their choices matter. It's not, uh, you know, it's not fake choices. It's real, real decisions. Yeah, got it. Player agency. You know, and furthermore, I mean, you know, the creativity, the freedom, the graphics, I mean, just across the board, we're going to need to see just the best version that anyone's ever expected. We set the bar pretty high. Over delivery, okay. And we've got one more requirement. I think we need to really feature the process of seramorphosis in this game. I think if we do that, that will bring everything together and make it a true D&D experience. Seridosis, eh? Seramorphosis. Seramorphosis, okay. All right. All right, well, I think we can do this deal. Shouldn't be a problem. All right. Well, it's good. You wanted to do a tour? Let's do the tour. With some stroke of luck and the company's track record, Larian had a chance to finally pitch its ideas to Wizards of the Coast. After receiving around two pitch versions of the game, Wizards of the Coast gave the green light and almost total freedom for the development of the third sequel of Bolus Gate. Having six years in development and the lengthy early access period back in 2020 came 23rd of August 2023. This is the day Baldur's Gate 3 released for Windows and the 6th of September for PS5 with thunderous reception. Having sold 5.2 million units on Steam with over 10 million hours played on launch week, racking in 800,000 plus peak concurrent players and is now among the top 10 of all time most played games in the platform not to mention the amazing post-launch support to iron out the bugs and performance issues and also introducing quality to life features such as the wardrobe where you can store inactive avatars from your multiplayer session and the ability to finally customize companions and tab using the magic mirror they also included series after series of beefy patches and fixes that the team constantly provides all of this is maybe because the company is still an independent publisher they still have the semblance of freedom and imagination to do whatever they want and to just make amazing games unlike the corporate driven companies like ea activision ubisoft and etc companies like laurian studios are a gem in the industry just like the old school games of the past in order to make money you just need to make great games that's it. Let the game or the product speak for itself. The quality of the game will justify its purchase value. Not just the fear of missing out that you need to get the next big thing. Even if that big thing is hollow and empty inside, do you know what set the internet ablaze and put Larian Studios in the pedestal as one of the industry's new standard of what a game should be it's just this humble answer to a question are there any in-game purchases for Baldur's Gate 3 their answer and I quote no there are no in-game purchases in our game we believe in providing a complete and immersive gaming experience without the need of additional purchases enjoy the game to its fullest without any additional cost or microtransaction. Baldur's Gate 3 is taking the internet by storm. At its peak, a whopping 800,000 plus concurrent players were playing this weekend, catapulting it to the number eight most played of all time spot. The gaming community has sung its praises and it's incredibly refreshing to play a feature complete game of this caliber on day one. 
but AAA game developers want you to know that this is rockstar level nonsense for scope, that it's foolhardy to set expectations higher, and Baldur's Gate 3 should not be used as a raised standard to RPGs going forward. Why was the first response to defend the current state of AAA gaming as opposed to saying, hey, maybe we can learn a thing or two from Baldur's Gate 3 and make our game better for our customers. As of making this video, Larian Studio just won numerous awards from the Golden Joystick, awards such as Best Storytelling, Best Gaming Design, Best Game Community, EC Game of the Year. And the winner of Ultimate Game of the Year is... Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I, I think this is going to be our most coveted award because it was voted for by players and uh, we, we make it for them. I mean, like, and there's, yeah, there's nothing better than uh, making a difference in someone's lives, playing your game, knowing that they have a little escape from reality, uh, have fun with it. Uh, this is the reason why we all do this thing. This is the reason why all of you do uh, what we are doing. So uh, thank you incredibly, very, very, very much in a very Belgian way. Thank you very much. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> I highly doubt that that's gonna be it. It's finally award season, and it's time for our darling studio to get what it truly deserves. We'll deserve awards for a wonderful game from an amazing gaming company. Well done, Larian Studios, and congratulations. Cheers. Hey right, guys, thank you for watching. What do you guys think about the video? Do you guys agree with what I said? Are you guys rooting for Boulder Skate 3 to take? another game of the year award would love to know your comments down below shout outs for all the people subscribe and keep supporting the channel i really appreciate you guys and thank you so much for your support and for all the people who haven't subscribed i hope i earn a subscription in the future but if you're it today please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button it really helps me out a lot and that's it for me i hope to see you soon on the next master box show peace out bye guys